I'm Peter and today I'm here at Wellhouse or just up the road from Wellhouse to check out their latest electric van. Now this is the DFSK EC35. So electric motor, that's the headline figure. The other headline figure is they're going to start from around 36, 37,000. So that's roughly half the price, perhaps even less than half the price of something like a transit custom with an electric motor. So very, very budget price vehicle. Now, first thing to mention, the quality is not the same as a Ford or one of the Japanese conversions. It's cheap and cheerful, but it's an electric van. You know, if you live in a low emission zone and you want something really compact that could be used as a daily, will fit you know, any car park, I mean, this is a normal size parking space here. We'll flag up the actual dimensions, but it's, it's quite a narrow, short vehicle, but it's surprisingly practical inside. It's also got a really good long warranty. So there's nothing to worry about, plenty of peace of mind. And it's also got a really good quality wellhouse conversion in it. So let's take a closer look at some of the features. I have to say, inside, this has surprised me. This is quite a compact vehicle and I hadn't expected to have quite as much room in here as I do. I'm probably the, one of the worst people to test this van as I'm six foot two. And really, you'd want small people in it to make it look a lot bigger. But actually, there's quite a lot of room. The seating is slightly compromised by the um, roof structure. Obviously, you would expect that in uh, micro vehicles. But actually, there's quite a surprising amount of room. The roof, in particular, is a real game changer. It really gives it a spacious feel. And it's an adult-sized berth upstairs as well, surprisingly. I'm told it's over six foot. I'll test it later to find out. But yeah, it makes it a really usable space. Okay, as you can see, this one's not quite finished off. They're still waiting for the cushioned base for here. They've just carpeted it, so it looks a bit neater in the videos. But underneath here, you've got a Thetford loo, and I'll just put that out of the way. As you can see, it just opens out so you can get access to it. I've been in some camper vans where everything is so close and hemmed in, you don't feel like you could actually use it and live in it. But this one doesn't feel like that. We'll have a look over here at the kitchen cabinet. There's quite a lot going on. Right, let's take a closer look. I'll slide elegantly over at all the uh, kitchen equipment. So you've got this quite unusual, it's quite a narrow, it's the size of my hand, uh, sink and it's about oh the precise measurement of two hands width but it's deep so you can uh, easily use that for washing up mugs things like that and it also gives you plenty of workspace around it and it also allows a single flip up uh, tap so that's quite a good use of the available space and over here this is really cool. So, you've got a Sterling uh, induction hob. Now, the only thing to bear in mind with induction hobs um, is that you'll need special uh, bottomed pans to be able to use it. But other than that, it runs off electrics. This is an all-electric uh, van, which is very cool. But it's quite neat, that. Easy to uh, wipe clean quite a practical feature. Now, I'll just come over here and pan up a little bit so you can see the controls. Okay, so we've got, obviously that's your mains power on and off, leisure battery power, vehicle battery power, probably not hooked up because they don't tend to power the vehicles off the drive battery with electric vehicles. It's wise to keep them separate. Water pump and an extra uh, row of lights. Lots of sockets as usual. So you've got your uh, two 
uh, five volt USB sockets. These are both 2.1 amps. Uh, 12 volt main socket rated up to 120 watts and a 240 main socket. Now this only works on electrical hookup. Over here, I think this will be the, yeah, that's the main light switch on and off. And that's the fridge control. So obviously if it's yellow, the fridge is on. And then down here, if I press this and hold it, nothing happens at all because it's not plumbed in yet. But this is an electric heater. So obviously they're still working on it. But electric heating as standards, this is an all electric vehicle. There's no need to get gas bottles or muck about with anything like that, all electric. So very, very interesting vehicle, this one. I'll just pan down a little bit so I can show you the storage. As you can see, you've got these funky lights at the bottom. Just give it an upmarket feel. And you've got this trio of handy drawers. So that's the, the top one you probably use as a cutlery drawer. I've also noticed there's an emergency gas hob just to completely wrong foot me when I said it was an all electric vehicle. But that's just for emergencies and it runs on those um, little gas cylinders. So you can use that outside uh, if you want a bit of alfresco dining as well. So it gives you an extra string to your bow. Just close these up. All positive locking catches note. Now over here, what have we got here? We've got a flip down cabinet and I can just see inside there, we'll go in and have a look, but you can just see it's got the leisure battery down there. So this one's got a 110 amp power one, which is a great massive battery. And then if I pan up a bit, you'll see the separate Sargent control panel and the uh, solar regulator and a couple of fuses. So all your electrics are neatly in one place. So that's easy to find. Just come down here. Now, down here, I think we've got a big cupboard. Now what's in there? Oh, there's something interesting in there. What is it? Let's have a look. Right, that's a removable water tank. So fresh water tank. The one, the two. Right, so you've got two removable fresh water tanks in there. In fact, I'm wondering if one of them's a waste. I will ask later and put a graphic up. So easy to service, easy to clean and inside the vehicle so unlikely to be susceptible to frost damage. So that's easy to live with and then just lock that. Then up here you've even got a little tiny storage area uh, around the sink and actually you can get quite a lot of stuff in there that's not too bad at all so yeah maybe even squeeze a couple of plates underneath it. So yeah, every every inch of space is, uh, is used here. Up top, ah, now that's bigger than usual. These are, these are proper overhead lockers. Yeah, now that would hold quite a lot of um, tins, packet food, mugs, tea and coffee, that sort of thing. Certainly uh, a lot bigger than the ones that fringe the roof on uh, the Fords. So a lot of emphasis on practicality. Again, a couple of storage areas here. And if I just come over to the other side, I'll show you some of the other features. So I think this, is, this area is still awaiting its door. But uh, as you can see, you've got a hanging rail and then you've got a couple of deep storage areas. And then down below, if I just pan down a little bit. So down below, we've got a, a Vitrifrigo slide out fridge. Now that's well placed because you can access it when you're in the lounge on the seats or from outside if the tailgate's up in summer. So that could work really well. I think they've thought about that quite a lot. Uh, and then down here, this looks interesting. What is it? Oh, it's another drawer. And down below, I'll just come a little bit lower. Hopefully you can see that. I think that is an electric heating system. As I say, they've really made an effort to make this all electric, apart from the gas hob. Another nice feature, uh, 
is that it's got these proper caravan style opening windows. So you can open it up in summer, let a bit of breeze through. You've got a mesh fly screen and at night time, a proper concertina blind. So it makes it feel a bit like a sort of baby motorhome, that one. So I like that. It's sort of a, an upmarket feature you wouldn't expect in a compact camper. Now, one thing I do really like about this interior is the long bench seat means you can actually sit down here while you're preparing food or sorting yourself out, getting change, perhaps getting things out of the lockers. A really practical space. The other thing is this big bench seat is ever so long. I would say it's about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, that sort of region. So quite a lot of room and it's, I don't know what, um, what they've padded it with. It feels like some kind of um, memory foam, but it's, it's comfortable, really nice, totally flat as well. So yeah, you'll have a good night's sleep. You could use it in this orientation uh, if you're uh, just a solo camper or, ooh, nearly fell off. It's because it's not padded yet. Um, as you can see, you've got these huge deep lockers. This one's got the charging cable in and some other bits and pieces, but massive lockers. Um, and these are designed so that you can easily just slide the bed base across. So I've, re I've pulled it out to make a sort of one and a half width bed. And actually, I think two narrow people could fit on here or you could extend it further by a bit more jiggling of the cushions to get a wider um, double bed. So as you can see, you can get a full size double bed out of the uh, cushions if you rearrange them with the drawers pulled out and it's quite a decent sized double. Obviously you lose the walkway but uh, that's always the case with uh, compact campers. But yeah, very flexible, easy to use vehicle. The other thing is, this isn't the only sleeping area in this van. There's also an upstairs bit, so I'll go and uh, show you that. But yeah, surprisingly comfortable for such a small van. I think that's really important. A lot of people make a compromise in a really compact van and having a really sort of awkward and tiny sleeping area. But there's no compromise to be made here. This is comfy. Another thing I've noticed, if you have the driver's seat all the way back and you grab the backrest and angle it, you can actually create, you'll need a cushion, but you can create a sort of chaise long arrangement. This is ever so comfy. And this is how I would use this van. Now I know they're going to be adding a padded seat base on the other side. It won't be a travel seat, so you've only got two travel seats uh, up in the front. But this does give you another slouching option, which is always, always a benefit. I'll show you upstairs now. Okay, we're up in the upper section now. And if I turn around and pull down on the bed, just move it over so you can see. It's quite a uh, large area. I'm a six foot adult and I can just about fit in here, but I think this is really for smaller adults or children. Yeah, I mean, I could use this at a pinch, but I'd have to sleep in it diagonally. So it's a little bit shorter than six foot. It's not bad. It's not bad, it's a, it's a useful extra space to have. And I think for solo campers, you could either have a choice of upstairs or downstairs, uh, depending on what the temperature is. Now, on both sides of this um, uh, roof system, it's got mesh screens, so cross ventilation uh, won't be a problem in summer. Should keep it nice and cool. So if you want somewhere cool, that feels uh, out in the open air and feels a bit more like tent camping, then you'd come up here. In winter, you might want to keep the roof down uh, and sleep downstairs. But either way, uh, you've got the option, which is, which is always good. 
Now to the rear, it's quite a stylish looking vehicle and we have a look inside. You'll see you've got direct access to the interior. So if you want to load on perhaps a canoe, a kayak even, they could go straight in. And it's a wipe clean floor as well. So if it's got a bit of um, salt on it from the sea or whatever, it would wash down fairly easily. So quite a practical vehicle for hobbies too. Obviously you've got direct access to things like the kitchen drawers. So practical to load it up as well. Coming back with the shopping, straight in to the uh, fridge. So practical vehicle, they thought about it a lot. You could use this as a natural shelter, maybe for outdoor cooking, pop your barbecue down here. Obviously you'll get a bit of smoke in the vehicle, but the smell of sausages is all part of camping, isn't it? But yeah, it's um, surprisingly practical and it's changed quite a lot from when I last drove this vehicle as a van. Speaking of driving, that's what we need to do next. So let's have a look at the cab and then let's take it out on the road and see how the conversion's affected how it drives. And you can see how compact it is. It fits very neatly into a regular car park space. So you've got plenty of uh, storage space in the door pocket, the usual uh, electric uh, windows, and then the cab. The cab is relatively spartan compared to something uh, like a Ford Transit Custom, but it has all you need. It, it reminds me of an early uh, Japanese van. So the, the, the fit and finish of it, uh, that's the kind of impression I get. Little coin pocket there, uh, auto lights, uh, light uh, level. So we'll just clamber aboard. And I'll just switch it on. Steering wheel, it's unusual in that it's got no buttons on it. Makes a change actually. So we just fire the car up, van up, sorry. You can see the dials do a nice little uh, dance and there's lots of colours, perhaps a bit too many colours. I also notice they've upgraded the head unit to a uh, modern one, which has Bluetooth. Oh, it's going to do my job for me and tell me exactly what it has. It has album artist wallpaper. I've no idea what that is. Oh yeah, it's when you're playing a track, it will show you the artist. Down here, you've got your uh, usual, very basic heater controls. So you've got recirculation, uh, if you don't want traffic fumes getting in. Fan speed, Ooh. obviously temperature. Wow, put that up to hot, it's been on cold. Um, and direction. So all simple, basic stuff that you don't need a user manual to figure out how to work. Down here, a couple of cup holders, and then down here we've got the rather shiny and difficult to see uh, control. It's a bit like uh, on BMWs or something like that, where you just put it into reverse, neutral or drive. Very, very straightforward. I think the, the middle, no it doesn't, it looks like it's an I, iPad type thing, it might do something, uh, but it doesn't do anything, the middle bit. Just a simple intuitive control and Again, a pleasant change from the days of electronic handbrakes. Normal handbrake with normal cables that will be dead easy to look after in the long run. So simplicity is a plus point in this van. It's surprisingly conventional. Normal key, goes in the ignition, turn it on, foot on the brake, and you just have a knob down here, reverse, drive, whatever you want to select and the dash display then indicates direction of travel. It's got revs uh, up to red lines at 6,000 according to this, uh, and it's got a speedo that reads in both miles per hour and kilometers. So I think it's got a red line of 80 miles an hour. I'm not sure it can do 80, but it can certainly do motorway speeds no problem. 
The actual uh, spec of the motor I'll put up on a, uh, a link, but it's quite a nippy feeling thing. We'll go on the road and explore that a bit more, but I just want to show you the, sort of the interior layout. I've also noticed, if you look down here, you lift this up, you've got access to all sorts of exciting electrical goodies and another battery. So I think that's the vehicle battery and that's like the battery backup for things like wipers, lights, that sort of thing, just in case you do run out of range uh, if you've uh, been extremely unlucky. Now the range, uh, at the moment, it's telling me I've got 65% of uh, charge remaining. And again, I'll put a uh, link up to say uh, the range. Right, let's take it for a spin then. It's so weird not listening, not turning the key and hearing a, a starter motor churn into life, but it's very nice on the road, no engine noise at all. One thing I have noticed, if you select reverse, they've added a reversing camera, which is uh, very convenient. Uh, and it's also, if I show you over here, it's got a little display which indicates the meters uh, behind that the object is. Uh, so that's linked to the uh, reversing uh, sensors. So very practical. It's also got, you'll notice, nice big mirrors. These are more like uh, proper van or coach mirrors. So you've got a really good view. Uh, and as the driving position is high up too, with lots of glass and quite narrow A-pillars and an elevated driving position, the visibility is brilliant. Really, really good. So if you're a shorter camper, this could work really well for you. So now for the best part of my job, taking it for a spin. Just move that a bit nearer. Wow, also moved it a little bit too far back. Okay. Now what you need to do, the one thing I have noticed with this vehicle, you need to make sure it says ready on the um, display. And you need to turn the key as if you're firing up the starter mode. You don't just turn it to the ignition on position. That caught me out a few times before. Just pop my seatbelt on. Right, check the mirrors. Now you can tell this is quite a basic vehicle because the mirrors are, uh, yeah, they're manual adjust. Wow. Don't think I've had a manual adjust mirror in years. But as I say, cheap and cheerful, simple, no complex motors to go wrong or massive expense if somebody clips your mirror. Right, let's take it for a spin. I don't know if you can hear that, it makes a slight whining noise, uh, this vehicle. Uh, it says I've got 65% charge, which absolutely plenty. One thing I have, I, I must tell you with electric vehicles, it requires a slightly different mindset. Basically, if you're on the road, every time you stop for a coffee, just go and plug it into a mains charger. If you're at home, whenever you get it home, plug it in overnight. You always need to get into the habit of putting a little bit of charge in it all the time. If you think about it, you tend to go to the petrol station maybe once a week, once a month, depending on how many miles you do. An electric vehicle, slightly different mindset. Just plug it into the wall every time you get back at night and program the app on your phone uh, so that it charges at cheap rate electricity, you can usually say when they're going to charge or just plug it in manually to charge at those times. So you take advantage of cheap rate electricity. Most people who do that find they save an absolute fortune. Obviously, if you haven't got a driveway and you can't plug it in, then that becomes more of a challenge. But the secret to electric vehicles is being able to charge them at home. And who knows, maybe you will never need to visit an electric uh, charge point, a public access one. Um, it's a different mindset, it really is. Now one thing I will say, when I drove this unconverted, the first time I uh, set foot in it, uh, it was a bit bouncier to drive. Now, the weight of the conversion 
has settled that obviously vans are designed to carry heavy loads and adding the weight of conversion um, eases the springs a bit it's not rigid it's not that firm so it, it's actually become more convert uh, more comfortable converted uh, which is a bit of an odd thing the motor makes a slight whining noise not unpleasant but is audible it totally stops obviously when you're stationary all the controls you've got all your uh, wiper controls on this side and basically lighting and indicator controls on this side so very straightforward vehicle to uh, get to grips with there isn't a learning curve this is a just very basic simple uh, vehicle to drive okay well I'm up to what are we up to Roads open go up a bit here, so up to 43. I'm actually having to slow down because there's a slow Audi in front. It, it, it has that thing that all electric vehicles have. They just feel easy. There's no gears to worry about. Very simple to lift with. I do like electric. Um, if you want an easy to drive vehicle, uh, it doesn't get much easier than an electric vehicle. Anyone could drive this. I like the big mirrors. As I mentioned before, the visibility is great. And when you're on the road, the seating position is quite high. I'm quite tall, and on some small vehicles, the headlining is too low, and I'm kind of crouching down. I'm not in this, I'm sat in a perfectly nice position. I'm just going to turn round up here. The indicator's on the right-hand side, which takes a little bit of getting used to, because on most European vehicles it's on the left-hand side. Just whiz round here. Nice little village green. And we'll start heading back. It's got quite uh, a lot of power steering assistance as well, so you know, even, even with one finger, I can move it. So it's very light. If you have any um, mobility issues or, you know, bad arms, things like that, this will be no problem to you at all. And off we go. It's got quite a good turn of speed. 0 to 40 is quite nippy. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a... It's a it's one of those vehicles that's exactly what it says on the tin. It's cheap and cheerful, no frills motoring, that gives you all you want. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel, it's not trying to be really clever, it's just a practical, easy to live with, cheap as chips vehicle. Um, what's not to like about that? 